are going to be stick welding with the Horny Easy Weld 180ST. This machine is stick and TIG capable, as well as dual voltage. On 120 volts, your amperage range is from 10 to 90 amps, and on 230 volts, your amperage range is from 10 to 180 amps. On 120 volts, you can weld up to a quarter inch, and on 230 volts, you can weld up to a half inch. This machine is perfect for DIYers, farm and ranch, maintenance, and light industrial. It is also generator friendly. This machine does have a DC only output and can weld stick electrodes up to the diameter of 532nd. Today we are going to be stick welding with a 332nd 7014, an 8th inch 7014, and a 532nd 7018. So we are going to turn the machine on. We have the machine set up electrode positive. So our stinger is connected to our positive and our ground is connected to the negative. We're going to make sure that our machine selector switch is flipped to stick welding. On your dial here, on the inside ring is your amperages when you're running 120 volts and the green outside ring is for when you're running on 230 volts. So we are running on 230 today. So we're going to start out with our 332nd rod. For our 332nd rod, we can start out at, say, 60 amps. So we'll start at 60 amps. We'll give that a try and we'll see what we can get from that. Today I'm just going to be putting a fillet down the crease of this angle. So let's give that 332nd rod a shot and then we will move on to the 8th inch 7014. Before we actually get welding, uh, I would like to talk about the 7014. So your 7014 is perfect for a beginner welder. Uh, it is contact rod so you can strike your arc and keep this rod touching the material the whole time that you're welding. Also, it is a medium penetrating rod, so it is a good replacement for a 60, say 6011 or 6013, it's kind of an in-between of those. So this rod, if you're just starting out to stick weld, then this is a good start so that you don't get too frustrated because the other rods, if you don't keep the correct um, space between the workpiece and the electrode, then you're going to stick and it's going to be super frustrating. So the 7014 I always recommend for beginners. But with that being said, we will gear up and then run a beginning. I'm going to turn on our ventilation here for a second. Got good. 
tie in on the top and bottom. There is a little bit of undercut there, so I may have put just a small amount too much motion into my weld. Uh, but all in all, it's a pretty decent weld. Now, we're going to move on to the 8th inch diameter rod. 7014 again. We're going to turn our amperage up. We'll go to about 90 amps. Also, uh, when you're put, placing your stick inside of your electrode holder, there's a couple different ways that you can do this. Uh, there's grooves in here, so you can put it straight across so you can have it at a 90 degree angle coming out of your electrode holder. And then you can go in and weld. Uh, there's an X so that it's about 45 degrees. And then also if you need to get into a tight area, you can just feed it right out of the front and then you have a smaller surface to get into wherever you're trying to weld that. Also remember that this is hot, so uh, when I finished that last weld, I removed my electrode before I put the stinger down. The reason I did that is because if I were to put this down right now and this would contact any of this metal that is grounded, it will arc. So remember to keep that in mind when you first start. Now uh, there's a lot of times that you'll just throw it down and then it'll arc on the table. Uh, to avoid that, just remove your electrode from your electrode holder. Alright, so now we're set to 90 amps. We got our 8th inch diameter 7014, and we will run this rod. inside of your weld and then you will trap slag in there which can cause it to become weakened or brittle or cause it to crack if it was a high structure weld. So once again we're going to take our chipping hammer, remove our plugs. Alright so that weld sounded really good as well. Um, lots of people relate the sound of the weld to crackling bacon so when you're frying your bacon um, that's kind of the sound that you're looking for when you're welding. So we have really nice tie-in with the top and bottom plate here and a really nice fill to our fillet. Alright, now we'll move on to the big boy. So 532nd, 7018. We are going to want to run this at a pretty high amperage. So let's give it a shot at... We'll start at 120 and see where that gets us. If it's too cold, we'll stop and then start again. Turn on the ventilation. All right.
guillotine rod. It's not a contact rod. So when you are welding with this, you do have to keep a space between the base metal and your electrode. Uh, about an eighth of an inch or so is good. So we'll chip the slime off here and see what we got. looks really nice so those settings were pretty good um, there's some undercut up here on the top plate so I don't know my angle was a little off I was focusing a little bit too much on the bottom plate but digging into that top plate so I can readjust and then finish out this plate the 7018 uh, also this rod is a lot more fluid so as you're welding you're just kind of dragging it along and it's just filling in that space that is needed when using the 7018 rod, after you finish your weld, uh, that same kind of flux that's covering your weld once you're done, that you clean off, is going to be basically created at the end of your rod. So what you can do is you can take your fingers and you can pinch that off, or you can rub it on the material that you're using, or a file, um, or you can take your pliers and just kind of break it off. But you only want to break it to the tip. If you go past the tip and remove that from the actual rod, then it's not going to be easy to continue to weld and basically you have to get rid of that rod and start over. So we are going to finish out this weld like I said and we will see what we do.